The conflict in the Middle East is creating a ripple effect across the global economy as it's disrupting one of the world's most significant shipping routes. Rising shipping prices and supply chain risks are the topics for our weekly segment today. Our trade correspondent Moon Hyeon joins me in the studio. Hi, Hyeon. Good evening, Jungmin. Evening. Uh, so, Hyeon, can you tell us why there's been an issue with shipping around the world? Absolutely. So over the past couple of weeks, hundreds of ships have been taking a detour um, in order to avoid attacks from Houthi forces in the Red Sea. The militant group has attacked several vessels with drones and rockets in what it says is an attempted block of Israel's shipping links to disrupt its military campaign against Gaza. As you can see on the map here, the shipping route through the Suez Canal is the shortest pathway connecting Asia with Europe and the east coast of the United States. It's why this route handles roughly 12% of the world's annual global trade, but now ships are taking an alternative path around Africa. If you look at, at the travel time, which is in some respect now double, triple the time to the eastern map, normally it's 10 days through the canal. Now it is 18 days longer. Despite the longer journey, major ocean carriers such as Germany's Hapag Lloyd and Denmark's AP Moller Maersk have diverted their ships. And as a result, the International Monetary Fund found that maritime traffic passing through the Suez Canal so far in 2024 fell by more than a third compared to the same period last year. What does this all mean for the economy and which countries are affected? So naturally, the crisis has led to a spike in shipping rates, as well as rising insurance premiums for ships that are still choosing to travel through the Red Sea. Not only does this directly translate into higher costs of goods, but it's also causing shortages at stores as parts and products are taking longer to arrive. According to UK-based Drury Shipping Consultant, the average worldwide cost of shipping a 40-foot container has more than doubled in the past month. Companies such as Tesla and Volvo have suspended operations at some of their European plants due to shortages of parts for Asia, while retailers such as Swedish furniture giant IKEA have warned of possible delays in stock. With these rising costs, financial services company JP Morgan Chase predicted that worldwide consumer prices could rise 0.7% in the first half of the year and contribute to worsening in inflation. So in short, it's affecting countries all around the world and not just China, which relies heavily on shipping for its exports. In the end, container shipping companies, European routes and the U.S. routes all go through Korea, China, Singapore and Europe. So their impact is virtually the same. And Hedeon, is there any necessary steps taken to mitigate uh, these problems? Well, Jungmin, the problem is still ongoing, so firms and governments are keeping a close watch to respond to any changes that arise. It's difficult to tell when normal operations can resume, so there's been a variety of responses to tackle different aspects of the conflict. Here's what an expert said about the steps that firms need to take going forward. Changes will vary greatly depending on how much faster shipping companies deploy their ships and respond by changing network strategies again for this increased journey time. Governments are responding in various ways. The U.S. has formed a naval coalition with the likes of Britain and France to counter threats directly in the Red Sea. South Korea, on the other hand, is focusing on rising shipping rates. During an emergency meeting to discuss exports this afternoon, the country's trade ministry unveiled its plans to implement support for firms in stages depending on how shipping rates rise. It will be offering vouchers for firms to cover costs for services such as consulting and advertising and raise support for SMEs by increasing designated freight space and funding 3.6 billion Korean won or just under 2.7 million US dollars for shared warehouses in Europe and the US. Mm -hmm. All right. Thanks for your report today, Hedon. Thank you for having me.